Hey all, thanks for joining me. Today we're going to see just how easily NetBurner devices can be used to develop applications that remotely control digital multimedia, just like this LED light strip. Best of all, this application will take advantage of existing, readily available mobile web technology, which means no special application development needed, just one application for all of your platforms. With this application, we can access our mobile ready control panel from any desktop or mobile device. To change the animation, we just pick one from the list and hit the set animation button. That's really all there is to it. In the rest of this video, we will cover the basics of the project and point out some of the components of the hardware that you'll be working with. Okay, so here we have NB Eclipse, which is our IDE. As the name implies, it is based off of Eclipse. I went ahead and took the liberty of creating a demo project for us, LED strip demo. We have a lot of documentation online and resource materials that cover how to create projects and use MB Eclipse, as well as how to get your device connected and set up. So I don't want to bore you too much with those details. We're going to drop down uh, our project and just take a look at the structure really quickly. We can see uh, we have an HTML folder, which has all of the resources that we are going to use for our application. You can see we have the CSS files, some JavaScript files. We have a range slider library that was written by Andre Rufert. And then we also have one single page for the control panel to our application. We have a few classes here that we'll talk about briefly, but we're going to go ahead and get started in main.cpp. This is where all of the initial magic happens. I also want to point out to you just how easy it is to get a network device up and running with NetBurner's libraries. Really all we need to get going is this function, init with web. It sets up the IP stack, prepares the device for network communications. If the device has a static IP address in its configuration record, it will use that. Otherwise, it will contact the DHCP server and get one for you. We're going to go ahead and skip these two lines and jump down here to register post. Register post assigns the HTML post handling callback function to process uh, requests from our mobile ready web application. The last function I'd like to point out is OS Task Create. It allows us to easily create multiple tasks within our application so that we can handle user input independently from running data to the LED strip. The first class that we're going to point out is in LED.h. It stores all of the color information for each of the LEDs on our strip. Next we'll take a look at the LED strip class, which is in LEDstrip.h. In addition to maintaining the list of LEDs, it also maintains which animation is currently being displayed on the strip itself, as well as all logic for each of the animations. Next we're going to look at SBI Interface. SBI Interface is just a little class we have set up so that we can easily write data directly to the LED strip using the SPI module. Let's take a look at web.cpp. This is where we actually handle the post requests that are sent from the client. Finally, we're just going to go ahead and do a build, make sure it works. Next, we'll go ahead and open up a browser, put in our IP address, and let's check out some of these animations. Let's go ahead and do a red Knight Rider. See how that looks. Oh, seems to be good. I'm actually a big fan of the twinkle animation. So we're going to do a little purple. All right. And then we can see some of these down here don't actually set the LED values. They're just random. So let's see what that looks like. All right. Everything seems to be in order. Let's go ahead and take a look at the hardware and see what we're dealing with. OK. So our setup has three main components. The first and most obvious is the LED strip, which is where all the sparkly lights happen. The second is our module. Uh, we're using the Mod 54417. This is where all the processing power takes place, all the network communications, all of our memory is stored. And last but not least is our development board. We're using the Mod Dev 70CR. This is what hosts the module, allows us to provide power to the module. We can have serial input and output if we wish. And we can also access all of the pins on the module. Speaking of pins, let's go ahead and see what we're hooking into here. First we have our ground wires. 
We have one ground wire that is connected directly to the power source for the LED strip. The second is connected to the LED strip itself. The next two wires are used to send SPI data from the module to the LED strip. We have a black data line and a yellow clock line. That about wraps it up for the hardware as well as our demo. Thanks for watching and have fun.